So let's first talk about price ceilings. Now what a price ceiling means is that's when the government says, this is the maximum price you're allowed to set. So you can't set any price above that. You can go below that if you want though. So let's take a look at the market for socks where the current equilibrium price is $5. Now, before we get into this, let's think about what this really means. This means that every single sock ever is sold for $5. That's different from our real world where different socks are different prices, but keep in mind that in this theoretical fictional world of econ, uh, what we have is that every single sock ever is sold for that same price. So now, what if the government says that the price ceiling is, say, $6? What that means then is that $6 is the maximum price you can set, and so you can't go above that at all. Well, here's the thing though. If our price is currently at five, if every stock in the world sold for $5 and the government says, hey, you can't set it any higher than six, well, five isn't higher than six. So really, this is what would be considered a non-binding price ceiling because it has no effect on the equilibrium at all. So if the question is what happens uh, in this market to the equilibrium, once a price ceiling of $6 is imposed, the answer would be that it goes from 100 comma 5 to 100 comma 5. So that's non-binding. But what if on the other hand, the question said that the ceiling was $4, meaning the government said that $4 is the highest price you're allowed to charge. You can't go even a penny higher than $4. Well, our current price is 5, so that's illegal now. So we'd actually have to lower it just to be able to be at most four, the price needs to go down to four, right? Legally, it can go below four, but I mean, hey, if the market wanted to set a price as close to five as legally possible, the price is gonna be set at four. The question then is, what's the new quantity? Well, the two sort of candidates seem to be 80 or 110. Well, let's think about what these points mean to figure out what the new equilibrium quantity will be. Well. This point means that the demand is 110 at the price of four. So if the new price is $4, people, customers that is, demand 110 socks. But businesses, this point, the supply is only 80. Businesses only wanna supply 80 socks. So notice these two aren't the same number as each other, which means people demand more socks than are supplied. And so that's why that gap over there is what's called a shortage there's a shortage of socks because more socks are demanded than are supplied. So here's the thing though, in a free market, you can't really force anyone to buy or sell something that they don't want to. So even though 110 socks are demanded, we can't really force anyone to sell more than the 80 that they wanna sell. So the new equilibrium quantity transacted is gonna be this over here, 80. So now the question is what happens to the new consumer and producer surplus. Now that we know that the equilibrium is now over here at a price of four and a quantity of 80. Well, let's first think about the producer surplus. Producer surplus again is the area underneath the price and above the supply curve. So it used to be this triangle over here underneath that price of five and above that supply curve, but now the price is only four. So the area is now only this much. This is the new producer surplus. So it went down by that trapezoid over there is what it went down by. Because it used to be all that, now it's only this much. So that's the new producer surplus. Now as far as the consumer surplus goes, here's where it might get a little weird, but what consumer surplus really is, is that it's the area underneath the demand and above the price. So, it, you know, it used to be this much, right? But now customers are paying less. They're kind of better off, right? They only have to pay $4. So it's now gonna include this, but here's the thing, it gets cut off at 80 because only 80 socks are sold now. Notice it used to also include this triangle over here because it used to be this much. Uh, but now they're not buying as many socks as they used to. They're only buying 80 instead of 100. So the consumer, the producer surplus clearly went down. The area in red over here clearly went down. But the blue area, the consumer surplus, it's kind of ambiguous. Part of it's definitely going up because, you know, they have this rectangle that they used to not, but they're also losing a little bit. So the CS overall could go up or down, but the producers are definitely worse off. But one thing that is also clear is that the total of consumer and producer surplus is now only this much. It's less than what it used to be 
without the price ceiling. It's less specifically by this triangle, and that's why this triangle is the deadweight loss, because that's how much less total surplus there is for society to go around.